I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Teresa Lunsford, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Center Joint Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you. All right, so you teach algebra, pre-algebra, and support math yes. at Wilson C. Riles Middle School. Yes. So we, we're kind of familiar with algebra and pre-algebra, but explain support math. Support math is for students who need a little extra. Um, maybe um, they have some holes in math from previous years of school, and I try to fill those holes and then give them uh, some um, extra support for what they're going to be learning in their classroom, um, just to make sure that they do well. And so basically, um, you're trying to find out where they might have some deficiencies. Yes. And so what that means, like, I guess, and correct me if I'm wrong, is but you're each student would be different because each student would have different different holes to fill. Absolutely, yeah. every single one of the students are different. And they're small classes, so I'm able to give them attention um, to specifically what they need. So, as a teacher, I'm sure you've heard this at one point or another for, as a bath teacher. When am I ever going to need this? Oh boy, do I hear that yeah. all the time. So how do you explain it? Well, I tell my students, look around. Name something in the class they'll point something out and I say, well, let me tell you about the math that it took to make that chair or to make that table. Um, they say, um, money. And I said, well, let's talk about math with money. Uh, pick a job, they'll pick a job. I talk about what math has to do with that job. Math is everywhere. I tell them they just have to get used to that. It's everywhere. And so once you finally make that connection, do they, do they get it? Do they understand the, the practical application? They know they need math. Um, uh, sometimes it's hard to figure out why they need uh, equations or negative numbers. And I try before each lesson to say why they need this math or that lesson's math. So um, it gives them an idea of maybe where they would use it in real life. So you're teaching, no pun intended, the value of math. In, in real life. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. They need to know that. So, so in, in doing so, uh, you probably have a wide range of students with different motivational levels. Um, what do you do for that hard to reach student who you really are trying to, to motivate to get them to not only stand the value and the, the need for math, but the subject itself? Well, I tell them that whether they like it or not, they have so many more years of math to complete before they get out of high school. Um, and they will need this math or specific concepts later on in life. Uh, and I um, try to motivate them by telling them how much money they can make in different jobs with uh, knowing their math skills or if they can save money in the future by knowing certain math skills. And uh, usually that motivates them. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been teaching? 19 years. Okay, so uh, in that amount of time, what, what changes have you seen in education that have kind of forced you to kind of reevaluate and do things differently and, and, and change the way you approach your job? Well, over 19 years, I've taught different math classes, uh, different grade levels. Uh, curriculum changes all the time. So um, the biggest changes that I've seen uh, in the past maybe four or five years has been where students are working on projects or uh, working together to solve problems, issues, problems. Um, they work in math groups a lot and so they have to learn to communicate better, to treat each other nicely, mm -hmm. um, and um, how to solve problems together, share, th share their ideas together. And that's a big thing. That's a big difference from 19 years ago. So there's more classroom collaboration, teamwork. Absolutely. More of maybe a reflection of, of, of the work community. And actually sharing, sharing their knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, um, that's good for students to learn, and we all need to do that even as adults. We need to be able to work together. So what are some of the specific challenges you face uh, as a teacher? As a teacher. Um, biggest challenges I face as a teacher are students who need more than what the school is offering. Um, there's so many children who are facing adult issues nowadays that um, I, I feel for them. They have uh, things going on at home that are just difficult and so school isn't their first priority. So how do you do that? How do you deal with that? Because you're, you, you, on the one hand you've got to get the subject matter to them and the other, on the other hand 
you're dealing with emotional issues? Well, uh, I really try to get personal with my students and especially the ones that are having difficult times. Um, and I do whatever I can to alleviate the issue. And sometimes it's just talking to them. Sometimes it's talking to their parents. Sometimes it's just letting the student know, I care, I'm there. Um, if there's any way that I can help a student out, whether it's with uh, uh, food, clothing, um, uh, housing issues, I will do my very best. Mm -hmm. Students know I am there for them. Because there are enough challenges as it is. It, it really is. So tell us about your background and how you entered college and well, um, I've been teaching for 19 years. Uh, I entered college as a uh, single mother. Um, my parents ha always had my back, always told me, you know, this is, this is what you need to do. Go for your dreams, get your dreams solved. Um, my son <laughs> did college right along with me. Um, uh, I can remember uh, being in the computer lab late at night and having my son have his little sleeping bag underneath my desk and he would be snoring away at two or three years old. Um, so um, I went through college as an adult, but um, did well, and my family always had the background of uh, um, do, follow your dreams, do as well as you can, and uh, be a community service person. Um, so enjoy people around you, enjoy what you do. So what made you decide to pursue teaching as a career? Honestly, I've always enjoyed teaching. Uh, I have an older brother who is a mentally handicapped. And so I always was like the mother hen, even though I was a younger sister. And seeing what he went through in school and how my mother helped him along, I was always the person who wanted to help with all the other kids. I have seven brothers and sisters, so there was a crew of us. Wow. My mom always said it was like running her own preschool. Um, and uh, I always knew that I wanted to go into education. And as a single mother, it was a perfect opportunity to, um, to spend quality time with my son. Starting college the way you did and the way you, you got into this career, does that give you a different appreciation for things that other folks might take for granted? Absolutely, it does. Like what? I, well, I've I've gone through things in life that maybe you know other people haven't gone through. I I've done more than teaching in my in my career. Uh, I've helped uh, run a, an auto dealership. I've done DMV. I've done you know the service manager job. I've done all kinds of things other than just teaching. Um, you know, worked fast food. I've done that before. So I can kind of correlate with some of the parents of my students who are not professionals at that time or don't have the college degree or something. I can understand that and I can give that information off to my students to do better, go as far as you can, and uh, hopefully encourage them. So you have kind of a special appreciation for, for things that a lot of other people might not have. Yes. And you pass that along to your students. Yes, I do. And my parents too, the parents of my students, you know, because they're not finished sometimes. They're sometimes very young and they're not finished and I always try to encourage them to do the most they can do. So what would you say to someone who is considering being a teacher? What's your sales pitch? <sighs> to be a teacher, you have to be ready for change. Um, nothing ever stays the same. Um, you have to have a huge heart. Um, you have to love what you do um, and um, have have fun while you're doing it. Um, not be afraid to let people in and let the students know that you have a personal side of you. Um, and encourage them to be ready, be prepared, and have fun. Have fun with teaching. And what's it like to be named a Teacher of the Year? It's um, um, a little surprising, a little overwhelming. Um, I think of myself as just a regular everyday teacher and when this happened I was like oh my <laughs> yeah so it's it's pretty exciting yeah. well congratulations to you thank you so much we've been speaking with Teresa Lunsford who is the teacher of the year for the Center Joint Unified School District thanks for joining us thank you